So we're finishing up going over logarithm, solving logarithm equations and also exponential equations. Um, so let's look at the following. So, so far, let's just remind ourselves what a logarithm is. And so if we had y is equal to log base b of x, the base of our log is the base of our exponent. And so by definition, another way to write, write this is b raised to the y, what this is equal to is our exponent um, of our log is equal to what you're taking the log of x. There were certain um, stipulations that had to hold on this. B had to be greater than zero. It couldn't be a negative number. B couldn't be one. Also, whatever we are taking the log of, so in this case, it's x, has to be bigger than zero. And so it's really helpful to be able to um, rewrite our equation if we're solving for logs get our log by itself and be able to rewrite it in exponential form to be able to solve. So we also saw some properties of logs. Um, and these are going to be helpful for us today. So some properties of logs. So recall if we had some log base b and there was multiplication of what you're taking the log of, so maybe capital A times capital B, we could rewrite this as a, a sum of simpler logs. So log base B of A plus log base B of capital B. So either way, either direction, those are equivalent. So actually, we'll probably be going more this direction today, where we're taking a sum or a difference of logs and rewriting it as a single log. And then if we had division, so log base b of some quotient, a over b, this is the same thing as, so we could rewrite this with log base b of a minus log base b of the denominator, capital B. Okay, so today we'll be looking at it more like this going that direction, but they're both equivalent and they're both very helpful in math. And then the last one property we saw, if you had log base B of something raised to a power X, then we can bring our power down front. So this was the same thing as X times log base B of A. And we're going to be using that actually right there. If we're trying to solve for an equation that has a variable in the exponent, and maybe we can't manipulate those bases to be the same like we were doing earlier when we were solving exponential equations, we're going to use this fact that if we take a log of something that has an exponent, it can come down in front. So if we want to solve for a variable and we can't do it by manipulating the bases, then we could take logs of both sides of our equation so that we can get that variable down in front and no longer an exponent. So that's going to be really helpful for us again today. Okay, so um, when we were talking about logs, there are some special logs and you might have noticed them already while you were doing some homework. Sometimes when you look at an equation or an expression with a log, you might not see any base at all. If you don't see a base, it's um, known to be base 10. It's a definition. So if you have log um, of x is equal to y. So notice that there's no base shown there. No base shown, then this is the same thing as 10 raised to the y equals x.
The other special log um, is called the natural log. Okay, so a natural log would be log base E of X equals Y. But when it is base E, we usually write this log as LN. Okay, so I've noticed or I've been told uh, by students later on in the course or later on um, after a course that this LN they thought was one in all along. And so I just want you guys to be clear that that is an LN. And so I thought about in the, in, of writing that as a capital LN just to, to know that. So if you have LN of X is equal to Y, this is all this is saying is your base is E. So the base of our log is E. So this is E raised to the other side, Y is equal to X. Okay, so by definition, natural log, it's just log base E. So E is a number kind of like pi. Um, and E is something that's used over and over in mathematics and will map a lot of application things. Okay. So let's look at a couple examples. So if you had log of 10 and it asked you to um, look at the following. So if we wanted to evaluate So this is no base is shown. If it helps you guys, put a Y here. So technically what this is saying, if the base is not shown, it's 10. So it's saying 10 raised to what power would give you back 10? And so our bases are the same. So we could use that rule of, um, exponential equations, if the bases are the same and set equal to each other, we can set the exponents equal. So y is equal to y. So if we had log of one over a thousand. So basically this is saying, we're gonna take 10, we're gonna raise it to what power? We can put a question mark there, we could put a variable there, is equal to this 1 over 1,000. So we could use our rule that if we can get our same base, we can set our exponents equal to each other. So this is, let's call this y, is equal to, one over, let's rewrite 1,000 as 10 to what power? Well, there's three zeros, so this would be 10 cubed. We need to move that 10 up into the numerator so that the bases are exactly the same. So make the exponent positive, I'm sorry, change the sign, so that would be 10 to the negative three power. And so y is equal to negative three. So if we raise 10 to the negative three power, we would get back one over a thousand. So I don't know if you guys noticed this, but let's rewrite this first um, equation that we just had, log of 10 equals what? Over here, log of one over 1,000. Notice 
this exponent of my 10 is 1. Notice that was what we got back. So our answer was equal to 1. Let's rewrite this log of 1,000 a little bit. This is the same thing. We said 1 over 1,000 was the same thing as 10 to the negative 3 power. Notice that that base of our log is 10, and we're looking at 10 of the negative 3 power. So 10 to what power gives you back 10 to the negative 3? So that would have to be my exponent. So there's a rule, and I believe we've stated it before, but if you have log base b of this, um, b raised to some power, I don't know what we want to call it. I'm just going to call it some function f of x. Then this is always going to equal to the exponent. This is saying b, right, to what power gives you back b raised to the f of x power. So this would have to equal f of x. So that's really helpful with natural logs. So remember, natural logs are just log base e. And if it helps you for a while when you see natural log, just rewrite it as log base e. So if you have the natural log of x is equal to y. So sometimes I'll say this, has the, uh, this is the natural log of x. Or sometimes I'll say this is just ln of x. But again, that means just log base e. So log base e of x equal y, or e raised to the y power is x. So that really wasn't an example, that was more of the, just the rule. Let me bring up an example. So let's say we have the natural log of e raised to the third power. Well, by definition, if it helps you rewrite this, this is log base e of e cubed. Remember, I just said, if your bases are the same of your log and what you're taking the log of, then this was just going to give us back our exponent. So notice this is the same. And so this would just equal my exponent of 3. Technically, what this was saying is e raised to what power? equals e to the third power. So natural logs are really helpful. If we have to um, take a log of both sides and we're dealing with e, so you would want to take the natural log. Otherwise, it doesn't really matter if you're taking natural log or logs of both sides. But we'll talk about that more when we get into that in a second. So let's say you had the natural log of the sixth root of e. And so it wants us to evaluate this. If it helps you put this as equal to y, 
if it helps you rewrite this for now as log base e. We know that we can rewrite radicals as exponents. And so the sixth root of the e is the same thing as e raised to the one sixth power. And so technically this is saying e raised to what power of y is equal to e to the one sixth power. But if we just remember that rule, we know natural log of something of e is just the power. And so y has to equal one six. What if you had the natural log of one? So that helps you if it doesn't already have the equal sign, you can always put it there. And so we're trying to think to ourselves, what are we raising log or our base is e here? So what are we raising e to to get back one? So if you want to write this again as log base e, you can. So e to what power equals one? So in order to get e raised to the Anything raised to the zero power other than zero is one. So e to the zero power is one. So a rule just in general, if you have some log base b of one, this is always gonna equal to zero. Okay, so I'm not quite sure with calculators nowadays, but it used to be that calculators only had base 10 and base E in your in the calculator. And so if you were given some problem and it had base other than E or, or 10, you had to use a change of base formula so that you could change that log to have base E or base 10 so that you could plug it in and get an estimate in the calculator. And so let me give you a change of base formula that can be helpful. Can I uh, hold my um, calculator up to the screen so you can let me know if that's the log base button? Uh, yeah, so yeah, on the top, on your top right, you'll see a log and a natural log. Oh, oh, I think, Oh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> it says log, but it doesn't, it says like log, and it looks like a decimal, and then it looks like maybe a spot where I could put something. Yeah, so if you click on it, I'm wondering if it will leave an open box for the base part and yeah. for the... Yeah, it does. Yeah, so you can do a natural log or a log base anything. Yeah, that's what I figured, that okay, cool. technology nowadays was does everything. <laughs> Just making sure. <laughs> so that's a good check. <laughs> okay, so change a base formula for logs. So if you had some log some base we can't use the calculator with because um, ours isn't as fa fancy as other students in the class. If we have log base b of a equals x, oops, sorry, we're not gonna have equals x. We're gonna just rewrite this. 
So we want to change this to have either base 10 or, or base E. And in order to do this, and so you can choose either one. So if we did base 10, we wouldn't write the base. So we'd have log of whatever you were taking the log of originally, which is A, all over log of whatever the base was of your original, so B. Or sometimes you use natural log instead. So you could have written this as the natural log of A over the natural log of B. So either way, you're going to get the same result. Um, so let's look at an example. So let's say you had log base 3 of 6. And so we want to approximate this. to four decimal places. Okay, before we do that, let's kind of decide about what we think it's gonna be. And so basically this is saying three raised to what power? Logs are just exponent. What are we gonna raise three to to get back six? Well, if question mark was equal to one, that would be three raised to the first is three. Is that close to six? No, not necessarily. If question mark was two though, this would say that three squared is equal to nine. Is that close to six? Well, that's actually uh, the same distance as three was to six, six is to nine. So maybe, it's between one and two, but we know that that power really is between one and two. Okay, so let's now figure out what it actually is by using the calculator. And so we can't use the calculator and change, we wanna use the change of base formula. So let's say, use the change of base formula. So in the change of base formula said, you're gonna look at either log or natural log. So let's look at first, let's look at both of them. So let's first look at log base 10. So it's a log of whatever you were taking the log of before, which in this case was six, all divided by the log of your original base, which in our case is three. Okay, so you're going to have to go to your calculator, and I don't have one pulled up, but you're going to plug it in. Actually, I have to find my log. Okay, so log of 6 is about 0.778158. Sorry. Really doesn't matter. All over the log of three, which is about zero point four seven seven one two. Normally, I wouldn't write that piece there. I would just take the log of six. Make sure you close your parentheses. Divided by the log of three, close the parentheses, and we get back approximately one point. I wanted me to go out four decimal places. So it has six, three, zero, nine, and then the next number after that fourth place is a two. So that would keep it as 0 0.6309. Okay, so that's telling me then that 3 raised to the 1.6309 should be approximately 6. So if you take your, your calculator, take 3, raise it to that 1.6309,
you get 5.9998038, which is approximately six. Okay, so I just wanna show that we would have gotten the exact same results. It doesn't matter. So sometimes in a problem and if you're doing it, you might choose log and I might choose natural log, but we're gonna get the same result. So if we use the change of base formula this time and instead we use natural log, this would be the natural log of six all over the natural log of three. And I just want you to see though that log of six and natural log of six are totally different numbers. So you gotta be careful with that. So ln of six, that's 1.79176. all over the natural log of three, which gives you about 1.09861. So natural log of six divided by the natural log of three, that should get me 1.6309, which it does. So either, either way, using natural log, so log base E or log base 10. Um, log base 10 is called the common log. Okay, so I needed to show you that. I usually don't use the change of base formula, but those were a couple of things. This was actually all of 12.7. 12.7 um, wasn't as hard, or maybe not as hard. Okay, so I'm, I'm jumping into now what I really wanted to get into, solving logarithmic equations and solving exponential equations. And this is 12.8. Let's do this. Well, you just went, um, this, it was 12.7 or part of the 12.6? That was 12.7, all of 12.7. So now we're at 12.8, okay. Yeah. So let me actually give you a new page. Hold up. And I think 12.4 is probably the scariest. Isn't that the word problem one? Oh, 12.4. Um, well, 12.4 we're gonna do with 12.8. Am I on the right? Yeah. Um, they're not too bad. You'll be fine. <laughs> um, um, you already lectured on 12.4, didn't you? I skipped the um, exponential word problems because I wanted us to have logarithms and so that we could go a little more in depth. So basically, 12.4 and the end of, I think it's 12.8. I'm not sure anymore what sections are what. Um, our problem solving, yeah. So I'll bring that in today. Oh, okay. So 12.8 so is exponential, I'll just write it, and logarithmic equations and problem solving. Okay. So remember while we saw if you had something like two to the X plus two power, this is equal to one over the square root of 
eight. And we wanna just solve for this. We wanna just solve for x. Here, we can manipulate our bases to be the same. So in this problem, we can manipulate the bases to be the same. But not always can we do that. So let's go ahead and just do it this time because we can. So I have two raised to the x plus two power. This is equal to, well, we know that the square root, this is the same thing as raised to the one half power. So maybe you rewrite eight raised to the one half power. But eight, right, eight could be rewritten to be base two. Oops. So I have two raised to the x plus two power, I technically don't need those parentheses, is equal to one over, so eight is the same thing as two cubed, all raised to the one half power. So going back to rules of exponents, power to power is multiplying. And so this is the same thing as two raised to the x plus two power is equal to one over two, well, three times one half, that's three halves power. I'm gonna rewrite this by bringing my two up into the numerator and changing the sign on my exponent. So I still have two raised to the x plus two power is equal to two raised to the negative three halves power. So now we can use the base form, um, change it. we change the bases to be the same. And so now we can set our exponents equal to each other. And so now we can say then, well then x plus two has to be equal negative three halves. We can get x by itself from subtracting two on both sides of our equation. So we have negative three halves minus two. I'm just gonna get a common denominator so I can combine them. So this is really negative three halves minus four halves. So negative three minus four, that's negative seven. So X is negative seven halves. Or you can write that as negative 3.5. Okay, so that's fine if we can manipulate bases to be the same, but that's not always the case. So for instance, let's say we had the following problem. And here we're given that three raised to the X power is equal to eight. So they can't be manipulated to be the same. So this is where we want to use rules of logarithms. So to get that exponent out of the, um, that variable out of the exponent, we can, we know that a log of some value to an exponent, we can bring that exponent down front. Okay. So we're going to use properties of logs. I don't want to use S4. You can show Sophia and Sun. What? And Sun. Right, good job. So use properties of logs. To bring the exponent down. Okay, this is an equation. So if we do something to one side of the equation, we can do it to the other. And so basically we wanna take the log of both sides of this equation. So take the log 
or a natural log of both sides. So if I do that, I have log of 3 to the x is equal to log of 8. So now we can use those properties of exponents that we can bring this exponent down front of our log. So this is the same thing as saying x times log of 3 equals log of 8. So I need to get x by itself. Log of 3, I mean it looks ugly, but it's just some number. It's just whatever number we raise 10 to to get 3. And so let's divide by just that number, log of 3. So if we divide both sides by log of 3, now we have x by itself. And so we get x is equal to log of 8 over log of 3. Okay, so on my math lab, they might ask you for two separate answers. They might ask you for a um, exact answer and an estimated answer. And so if they wanted it in an exact form, you would leave it as this, log of 8 over log of 3. If they wanted it approximate, then you're going to plug that into the calculator. And then just make sure that you realize how far they want you to round so you don't get that wrong. So log of 8, you always want to make sure in your calculator that you end that parentheses. Most calculators will put an open parentheses. You put the number and close it. Divide by log of 3. And so if it told me to round four decimal places, I'd have 1.892. My next number is a 7 is that's the fourth place, but the fifth place is an eight. So that eight tells me to round the seven up to an eight. Okay, so if you went back to the original problem, this original problem says three, right, to the x was equal to eight. So basically, this is saying 3 raised to the 1.8928. It's not going to give me back exactly 8 because we approximated, but that 3 raised to that power should get me something really, really close to 8. And if I do that, my result is 8.00009437. So really close to 8. So if you had e raised to the 2x is equal to 10. Okay, so technically this is saying 2.717918, something like that, raised to the 2x equals 10. So 2 times what could I raise that 2.7918 to and get back 10? I can't manipulate those bases to be the same, and so I want to use properties of logs. So this is where choosing um, either the common log, log base 10, or the natural log, one is better than the other. Well, look at the, where the, what you're trying to solve the variable, where it is. The base of the, where I'm sorry, trying to solve the variable in the exponent is e. And so that clues me in that I actually want to take the natural log of e of both sides. So I would look at the natural log of e raised to the 2x power. Whatever I do to one side, I have to do it to the other side of the equation. So the natural log of 10. So 
So we were just talking about if you have some log and you had the same base, you got back what the exponent was. Well, the natural log of e to the 2x, this is the same base. This is log base e of e to the 2x. So this is really just my exponent, 2x. So I could say bring my exponent down front, but the natural log of e is just 1. So 2x times 1 is 2x. So I have 2x then is equal to the natural log of 10. I'm just going to put parentheses there. Get x by itself. We could just divide both sides by 2. And so I get x is equal to the natural log of 10 all over 2. I cannot cancel that 2 and the 10. That 10 is part of the log function and the 2 is not. And I kind of wanted to make that same kind of point back up in that last problem. Don't think that you can just cancel out those logs and leave you 8 over 3 up here. That's not, that's not a right type of thinking. I don't know. Okay, so now we, we just got some tools or, or learned tools that if we can't manipulate those bases to be the same, we're just going to take the log or natural log of both sides and then be able to solve it. Let me just look at one more. So let's say you had six. It was all raised to the four X minus five power. And we're trying to get this equal to 18. So we're trying to figure out what X has to be. That if you plugged it in there, raise six to whatever that was, you get back 18. Okay, so I notice I could rewrite 18 as three times six, but that's not really all base six. Um, and so again, I have to either use log or natural log so I can bring that exponent down front. So, and it doesn't matter. I tend to a lot of times do natural log just because it's usually smaller, takes less time to write. But we'll get the same result in the end if you chose to use log. So this is the natural log of 6 raised to that power is equal to the natural log of 18. The whole point of that was so that we could bring this whole exponent down in front of our natural log. So be careful here because that's an expression. It's not just one term. And so I have to put parentheses around that whole expression of 4x minus 5. So at 4x minus 5, all times the natural log of 6 is equal to the natural log of 18. Okay, natural log of six is just some number, whatever power we raise e to to get six. I can multiply that, distribute it to the four x minus five, or right now I could just divide both sides by that. And so let's just do that. Your answer might look a little bit nastier this way, but I think it's easier. And so if we divide both sides by the natural log of 6, you're left with just that parentheses, 4x minus 5 is equal to the natural log of 18 over the natural log of 6. So we want to get x by itself. We can isolate the term with the x. We're going to add 5 to both sides. And so we get 4x is equal to the natural log of 18 all over the natural log of 6 plus 5. 
Okay, one more thing I have to do, get x by itself. We can divide through by four. I notice then I have a fraction over a fraction with a fraction. So if other way to get rid of and not think about it so we don't have to deal with that, think of it as multiplying by one fourth because that would cancel out the fours here. So you multiply the whole other side by one fourth is another way to think of it. So our fours cancel. You're just left with the x that you wanted by itself is equal to the natural log of 18 all over the natural log of six Um, and that's times four in the denominator. I'm just going to put it in front. Plus five fourths. And so we got the value x would have to be in order to raise six to that four times x minus five power to get back 18. So this is the exact answer. But we can also plug that in the calculator and get an estimated answer. Be careful again when you're doing this because you need parentheses are in the right place or it's not computing those order of operations correctly. So you have natural log, put 18, close your parentheses, divided by, here you need parentheses because you're multiplying. So four times, now put natural log of six and two parentheses plus five divided by four. So doing that, you get X is approximately 1.6533. Okay, so this, this actually works too. If the bases could be manipulated to be the same, you can always take the log or natural log of both sides of the equation and get a result. I just think it's easier um, a lot of times just to be able to manipulate the bases and not take the log or natural log of both sides. So after our break, we're gonna come back and we'll look at solving equations, log equations. So let me pause. So now let's jump into solving logarithmic equations. When solving logarithmic equations, um, there's a couple steps that you want to do. So the first thing you want to do is you want to get all the uh, logs terms with logs on one side of the equation. Get all terms with logs to one side of the equation. And all the other terms to the other side. So once you've gotten all the terms that have logs to, on one side, all the terms that don't have logs to the other side, um, you're going to rewrite the one side that have the logs as a single log. So use rules or properties of logs to rewrite the sum or difference of logs as one log.
Okay, so once you've gotten that as a single log equals something, then we can rewrite your log equation as an exponential equation. So rewrite the log equation. as the exponential equation. So once you've got it in exponential form, it should be in a form that you know how to solve for the variable. So it could be a linear equation, it could be quadratic, it could be rational. You just have to determine by looking at it, how are you going to go about solving it. And so once you solve for your variable, we have to be careful and just make sure that variable doesn't um, make any of the properties or def by the definition of log not hold true. So make sure your variable does not negate properties of locks. So in this case, if we had to log base b, I'm going to say it doesn't necessarily have to be x. It could be some function f of x. Then f of x has to be greater than 0. And b has to be greater than 0, and b could not be 1. So if for some reason, our answer makes one of these things not hold true, then we can't use it as our solution. What does it say there, number five? Make sure your variable does not negate the properties of logs. So log base 2, parentheses, x plus 2, and your parentheses, this is equal to 4. And the direction just tells us on these to solve each log equation. Okay, so it already has, it only has one term that has a log. It's already isolated to one side of the equation. Everything else is on the other side. And so the next property said, rewrite this in exponential form. So the base of our log, this is the base of our exponent. So it's two is raised to the other side, which is four. This is equal to what you were taking the log of, x plus two. Now we can solve for x. And so first let's figure out what 2 to the 4th is. And so 2 to the 4th, well 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16. So 2 to the 4th is 16 is equal to x plus 2. That one's not bad. We can just subtract 2 on both sides of our equation so we get x is 14. Okay, so I just need to make sure and check to make sure that this does not give me a log 
of something that is negative. And so if we plug in 14 up here for x, this is 14 plus 2. That's a positive number, and so I'm okay. So 14 is my solution. So log base 3 of 7 plus log base 3 of x. This is equal to 1. Okay, so we're first going to rewrite the one side. It has all the log, all of the terms with logs on one side, which we want. And so now we're going to rewrite that one side um, by using properties of logs and combine it as one. Oops. And so addition in between the logs, that tells us that we're going to multiply. So this would be 7 times x is equal to 1. So once we've done that, now we can put this in exponential form. So the base of our log is the base of our exponent. So this is saying 3 raised to the other side, which is our exponent 1, equals 7x. Well, 3 to the first power is just 3. 3 equals 7x. So we'll get x by itself. You need to divide both sides by 7. And so x is equal to 3 divided by 7, 3 sevenths. So we just need to make sure if we go back in here, when, wherever we see an x, there's only one place up in the original, I see an x. If I go back in and I plug in 3 sevenths here, is that a log of a positive number? And it is, so I'm okay. So if it was log base 4 of 12 minus log base 4 of x, this is equal to 3. Okay, so all the terms with logs are on one side of the equal sign. So that's done for us. Everything else is on the other side. We're using properties of logs to rewrite that as one log. There's a minus in between, so minus tells us we should be using division. So this is log base 4. My numerator is the first log, which is 12, divided by my denominator, which is x, is equal to 3.
Okay, so now I can rewrite an exponential form. So the base of my log is the base of my exponential equation. So this is four. My answer is always the exponent. So four cubed equals 12 over x. Oops, 12 over x. So figure out what four cubed is. Four times four is 16 and 16 times four is 64. So we get 64 is equal to 12 over x. We can get x, we don't like x in the denominator. So let's multiply both sides of our equation by x to clear the fraction. And so we have 64x equals 12. Divide both sides by 64 to get rid of the number in front of the x. Well, 4 and 64 both have 4 in common. 4 goes into 12 3 times, and 4 goes into 64 16 times. So just need to make sure wherever I have my x in my original equation does not make it a log of a negative number, and it doesn't because 3 sixteenths is positive, plugging it in for x just is still as positive. So pretty much just bringing kind of everything that we were learning together with logs, rewriting, using properties of logs to rewrite it as a single log, using the definition of logs to be rewriting in an exponential form, and then testing us on different ways of solving equations. So, log base four, parentheses, x squared minus three x. This is all equal to one. So remember, we cannot distribute that log into the parentheses. It's a log base four of something. It's already a single log equals a number. So we could put this in exponential form right away. So our exponential form, the base is four, raise it to the other side is our exponent one equals x squared minus three x. So looking at this, I notice this is a quadratic equation. Four is equal to x squared minus three x. So solving quadratics, I go about this a little differently and I set it equal to zero. So if I subtract four on both sides, I get x squared minus three x minus four equals zero. I notice this factors. So there's two numbers that multiply to negative four, add to negative three. So negative four and positive one. And then solve. So we're looking at when is x minus four equal to zero and when is x plus one equal to zero. So this is when is x is four and when x is negative one. Okay, I gotta check these. So I'm really, again, only concerned if I plug in that value for x, whatever I'm taking the log of, I need to be bigger than zero. And so if I plug in four in here for x, if I look at four squared minus three times four, is this number bigger than zero? So four squared is 16 minus four times three, so that's 12. 16 minus 12 is bigger than zero. Okay. So x equals four is okay. So 
So I have to do the same thing now when x is negative 1. So if I plug in negative 1, wherever I see an x, an x squared um, minus 3 times x, not bigger than 0. Okay, so negative one quantity squared, that's positive one. And then I have negative three times negative one, that's positive one. I'm sorry, that's not positive one, that's positive three. Adding that to positive one is bigger than zero. So x minus one is part of our solution also. So that's a good case where it's okay that our variable is negative. And when we plug it in for our value of x up here, it gave us back a log of a positive number. So it's possible that our variable can be negative and be a solution. It's possible that when we got an answer, we got a positive number and when we plug it back in, it gives us a log of a negative. If that was the case, we'd have to exclude it. So this, there's two um, different answers that would solve this um, log equation. One more. So log base 2 of x plus log base 2 parentheses x plus 8 is equal to 2. Okay. So all log equations or all terms with logs are on one side. We're going to rewrite that as a single log. So addition tells us multiplication. So this is log base 2 of x times x plus 8 is equal to 2. So we can rewrite it in exponential form now, or if you want, you can distribute that x to the x plus 8. It doesn't matter. Um, so if I distributed it, log base 2, this is x squared. x times x is x squared plus 8 times x is 8x equals 2. So exponential form, our base is 2 of our log is the base of our exponential raised to the other side, 2 equals x squared plus 8x. If you guys don't mind, well, let's just do it. I wrote down the problem wrong, but that's okay. Um, so 2 squared is 4 is equal to x squared plus 8x. It's just not going to come out as nice because I copied it wrong. Um, it's quadratic, so I have to get everything to one side of the equal sign. So if I subtract 4 on both sides, I have x squared plus 8x minus 4 is equal to 0. The problem is there's nothing I can multiply to give me negative 4 and add to give me 8 that I can think of, that, so I can't factor it. I don't want to complete the square. It's not um, in the form that I can use the square root method, so I can use my quadratic formula. That's the negative 4, right? Uh, yeah. So that's negative b. So x is equal to negative b, so negative 8 plus or minus the square root of 8 squared, 64, minus 4 times a is 1 times c is negative 4, all over 2a, so 2 times 1. So this is really 
Negative four times negative four is 16. So if I add 16 to 64, that's gonna give me 80 underneath this radical all over two. Sixteen times five is eighty. Is that right? No, it's not. How can I break down eighty? I know that there's a factor in there that's a perfect square because four goes in there, right? Twenty times. Yeah, sixteen times five. So I can break up down the square root of 80. Well, the square root of 16 is four, root five, all over two. Two goes into both the four and the eight. So if I split it up, this is negative four plus or minus two root five over one, which I don't need to write the one. The whole thing is I can't have a negative number or I can't have a log of a negative number. This is x is negative 4 minus 2 root 5. If I plug this in, that's all negative. If I plug that in here, that's log of a negative. So that one is impossible. Oops. But yeah. Also, yeah. Oh no, I don't okay. get rid of the negative. Do we divide? by the negative? Um, the negative, well, because we had two different solutions, right? The negative eight plus or minus. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so if we just looked at the, the minus one, that one doesn't work. Let's see if we plug in um, negative four plus two root five, is that a positive number or a negative number? It'd still be negative. And then, Oh wait, I get um, negative four plus two times root five. I get this is approximately 0 0.47. And so if I plug this into my original equation up here, well, when I plug in X here, that's 0 0.47, that's positive. So that one's okay. And 0 0.47 plus eight, that one's okay. And so this one does work. Okay. Okay, so um, this is kind of where we're standing. We're almost done with this section. I'm just gonna um, tomorrow, not tomorrow, Wednesday, next class period, we're gonna go over some applications. Um, looking at that and using logs or exponentials to help us solve those application problems. Then the next step is we just need to look at circles. Um, so looking at equations with circles, finding the center, finding the radius and being able to graph them and then maybe um, inequalities. Actually, I think we already did inequalities. We did. Um, so that's pretty much all we have left. So that's what we'll, we'll finish up on Wednesday um, this week with all the, the rest of the material you have. Monday next week, we'll review for your last test before the final. Um, so Wednesday, you'll have that all day type of thing, just like we did last class period or last test, where you can get in onto my math lab and take that test. Um, and then you're going to upload the written work like you had done for the last test. We'll talk about the video later. I'm not sure yet. I know some of you had problems uploading, so maybe not the time crunches before, but I'll let you know for sure. And then the final we looked up is on Wednesday of the following week, which was May 13th. And so there is a time period and it will be online just like the other 
couple exams. Um, I am going to try to have it so it's set at a certain time. And if you need to and can't take it at that set time, and I'll post that online, then you need to contact me and we'll set something else up that you can take it at a different time. But for net right now, just for the final, I am going to have it set for the time that it's, it was put in the catalog. So I just kind of wanted to give you an um, update of where we're standing. We're almost done. You guys got, you got it. I know you're doing a lot of work, but um, just a few more weeks. So if you can hang in there, you can make it. Um, that would be wonderful. If for some reason you're not in there, you, you, um, I did not withdraw some people. So some people might want to, they're in the boat that they're not going to pass the class and they're going to get an F because you just kind of stopped coming and things just happened. So if you're in that category, you're in luck because this semester you can get an emergency withdrawal. You're going to have to go in and you're going to have to um, fill out the form for the emergency withdrawal. Um, with emergency withdrawal, um, basically because of the circumstances this semester, nothing is going to hurt you with your transcripts. Um, this will not affect any of the, you know, three times you take it at a school or attempt that you have to go to a different district. That won't affect that. It should not affect any financial aid or grants or transfers and stuff like that. So just um, be aware. Well, transfer, I'm not sure. You've got to talk, you know, I don't know. But just so that you're aware that you do have that option and you do have that option to last day of class. So um, if you're in that boat and you want to, you can get a, an emergency withdrawal. It doesn't show up on the transcript other than a W and then it was an emergency and they'll know what, why I'm sure for a while. <laughs> okay, let me top the video. Maybe.